route to Jonesboro through the rugged state of Arkansas reminds us that timing is everything. To experience the extraordinary, it takes more than preparation. You simply have to be in the right place at the right time. Any week, for any player, everything can change. All the dedication, training, and support build to manifest a memory that can never be taken away from you. And as the visitors for this year's eclipse leave Jonesboro and the city returns to normal, remember, the groundwork for the next unforgettable moment is already on the way. The 2024 Jonesboro Open starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth stop in the Disc Golf Pros Tour. We have round one, front nine action of our feature card of the Played Again Sports Jonesboro Open Big Berry Commentary, bringing you all the action. Yules, Germ, and what do we got? What do you got right there, buddy? Oh, well, Gentlemen's just dropped these bad boys. This is a collab with Discraft. These are Jawbreaker Flex Cicadas. They're pretty much dead straight with a little bit of fade. You can find those jomezbro.com. It's a good time to get them because we're about to see billions of cicadas as they're about to appear in a double brood emergence. Like 17 trillion. 17 trillion cicadas. So go ahead and get yours now I so you can blend in. Number. We've got an awesome <laughs> card here. We've got the man who just owns this event, Calvin Heimberg. There's thing about renaming this place Heimboro. We've got Matt Orem, everyone's favorite disc golfer. Everyone's favorite disc golfer, Ricky Wysocki. What, what could be the fourth player to round out this insane card? I don't even, I can't imagine. Who's it going to be, folks? Anticipation's killing me. Oh, Anthony Brell. My goodness. This card's sick. Yeah, this is going to be a fire card with a lot of birdies. Course is in great condition. Yeah. It's going to be a little windy today, so it's going to yes. play a little bit tougher for sure. When the wind goes away on this course, it's a birdie fest. Well, yeah, we saw it last year. The yeah. course record previously was, I think, 13 under. Right. And then last year, James Conrad just came out in this fiery surge and just shot 17 down. We've got a brand new hole one, Paul. Yeah, they they relocated all the holes pretty much. And same holes, they just put us at a different starting point, which is a great starting hole. Par three, right near 500 feet. 520, downhill. Yep. The one thing you have to make sure you do, um, and that it shouldn't be an issue today with the tailwind, is make sure you've cleared the out-of-bounds. They have actually brought the out-of-bounds line yeah. farther away from that creek at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, we got lucky with the, the wind situation on this one. Straight tailwind, put yep. it on a little ante exactly like this. Is this going to fight out, though? It needs to fight out a little bit if he wants to be parked. Oh, that's great. I like the yeah, ad. That spot's fine. Uphill putt, 33 feet or so. Yeah, tricky win to start off because I, I felt like the decision was, let me let them introduce this. Well, shout out to Matteo's caddy. I just met him yesterday. His name is Crawdaddy. Oh, nice. So perfect person to be caddying for Matteo this week. But the wind straight tail, but sometimes it flits to a little crosswind, and so you don't want to put it on Anheuser, you think. But I do think that that's the play. Yes. Ricky, going low, this needs to stay up. Yes, it's fine. Out of putting range unless he gets crazy like he did last year at the Tour Championship. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. He just had like in three rounds like 180 feet worth of putts. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. What a pleasure it is to see the guy who's finished in the top four of all four events this year. Two wins under his belt. Finally, we are seeing Anthony Barella emerge as a superstar. We all knew he would be. And right off the get-go, inside 25 feet for the birdie. Fantastic start. And rounding out the card, please welcome from Safety Harbor, Florida, your defending Is that Garrett's brother? <laughs> it looks a lot like Garrett. <laughs> And Calvin, is he a three-time winner here? Sounds I, sounds. I don't know if they announced good. that. I didn't hear it in the Might intro. Might be a two-time with a with a tie. 
Oh, he won no, the, that. That let shown was a tie that he had that's, with Ricky. Yeah, that's right. This is high. This is great. Is it fading in time? I think it's pushing a little bit too f Oh, no. Here's the great part of it right here at the end. <laughs> a little long. Deep. Okay, that's a tough putt coming back. I like that play. Get it high so it has time to come back. And then let the tailwind do the rest of the work. Typically, you're going to hit those trees on the left. Yep. And you can see the difficult putt here. Ricky has low ceiling on top of being obstructed. Gives it kind of a eh. that's a bit. I mean, it's uphill. Yeah, you get right. a free you get a free bit at this one in that spot. That's right. Surprised you didn't go with like a sidearm turnover to like yeah give it, give a, it a more height. Most players happy to walk away with frog the hop right right away. Come on, give us that hop. Doesn't have a no. lot of space for it. No, and he's kind of in jail there. And we're gonna see what Calvin has left coming back. So today's windy, but it's more gusty, which makes it even even harder. Right, and wow, it is a tough putt. But yeah, you're right. This is looks like it's kind of in a lull of the wind. Yeah, a decent effort given. That basket is elevated on that log, and if he misses all the basket entirely, he's got a 30 foot comebacker. Not what you want in the first hole of the tournament. The a B in right side, and that is what you want making the sport look so easy so far this year, Paul. It's been a pleasure to watch. You know what he's been doing great, what I've noticed, besides everything? <laughs> he's been starting off really well with good putts on mm. the first hole. That can really get your motor no um, running. Make a nice little 30-footer. Like, that plays as a 30-footer. It looked a little shorter, but it play, it's uphill enough to where it plays like a pretty decently far putt. Yep. I had the same putt for birdie. I wasn't even close to making it. So I have a good appreciation for how well, that's a good that putt was. We can focus on the drive, sure. Yeah. On to hole two. This is a brand new hole. You might remember this as the location where Garrett Gerthy and Simon Lazat aced off to the left. But now we are straight 360. But it plays every bit of 400 plus. The obstruction on the right side is a real bunker hazard. If you're in there, you're not going to have any good luck for the for the birdie. Forehand plays if you've got a ton of distance, and this guy right here has a ton of power. Easy power, too. Look at that. That is just insane. And that's going to be long. That Ish. is, yeah. yeah, that is incredible to be able to throw with such little effort inside bullseye. Albert Tam, that is perfect. Very well done. Yeah, the trick is, is to get your disc on a little bit of Anheuser because if you play all Heiser you got to miss the branches on the right which AB's doing a touch yeah. of Anheuser though yep notice that that's important on this green because that's when you get the nice play that skips up to the target very well done there as well with a right to left crosswind here if you show Heiser the whole way it is going to skip left towards circle's edge Ricky trying to match follow suit and hits limb left side comes up about 80 short Maybe even more. You think it's that far? I thought I saw a little whisker there. Like a blue whisker. D does the FPO play the same basket? Yeah. They do? Yeah. This is a very hard hole for FPO. Do they have a different tee pad? It's very possible. I, I, okay. I don't have those. Um, yeah, okay. I'd say this, right this would be like, this is a hard birdie for the MPO, so I, I would be surprised. But anyways, Calvin Heinberg off to the left side. And you can see here, Matteo just avoiding getting deep into that right side stuff. But once you get in there, it really is no look at all at the basket. Yeah. It is heavily guarded in there. Okay, so yeah, you're right. Ricky is 55 feet away. Ooh, what a good little bit at it. Oh, going to keep him honest on the comeback putt for par. Yeah, that looked like it had... The good stuff there. Yeah. That's the thing today. I keep mentioning the wind and the little gusts, but it's hard to judge him. He probably thought he made a good putt there, and it yep. didn't get the right to left lift. I Think about this. This is a 360-foot straight shot. Nothing's really in the way at all. And three of the best throwers on tour weren't even in circle one. Yep. 
that tells you everything you need to know about hole two. It's, it's a very challenging, straightforward hole. And just like that, AB, two strokes on the card, two putts from the same distance, two birdies. Good little stick there from Ricky. Yeah, that was farther than I thought it was. I mean, but the thing is, Matty O, Calvin, Ricky, they're all playing the first two holes exactly how the field played them. The first hole averaged 0.29 above par. Second hole played 0.29 below par. So the field averaged par par on these first two. Gotcha. So really good start for AB. Sport's so easy if you can make every single one of those. No, it's not. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a lot easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier. If you... But only, was that five players birdied the first two? Wow. In the entire field, so pretty good. Well, and if they got the first two, they're probably thinking about getting the first three because now you got an easy one right here. 324, uh, left to right crosswind. Just around this corner, you're going to see a lot of little two pieces that try to get to the circle's edge or high enough to get over there to the park zone. See a lot of people miss it early right and maybe pull it a little bit, leaves you a circle's edge putt. Really the danger here is the slope and the high basket. And this is pretty wide. This it's starting great. to hyzer. Okay, here it goes. Never mind. Well, there's there's probably three for three, I'm yep. guessing. Third easiest hole on the course is hole three. This one's also good as long as it's not yeah. deep, I guess. I like this one. Mm -hmm. Go in. Ooh. I like that one a lot. Just had no chance but to hyzer, and at never any point was it too close to the tree line where it was in any danger of having an obstructed putt. Also great. Yep. You see that lift? That's yeah. what you're looking for. Okay. Still great. The bank shot into the bullseye. Got them a little more lift than I thought, but that's those gusts we're talking about. They'll lift, they'll drop. That's the stuff you can't control out here. Let's see if Calvin can get this turnover correct. I like the shape. Does it have the distance? It's digging into the ground pretty early. Just didn't quite beat the corner. It'd be interesting to see how many times Calvin has to force the backhand turnover this tournament while he's still rehabbing his forehand. I don't think anybody thinks that his forehand is the reason that he was the top player in the world in 2023, but it certainly is helpful in holes like hole three. Now look at those flags now. Yep. AB high and in there. That's a tricky putt on the, with the big wind coming in, elevated sure. basket. Right to left cross when the one that you don't want. Don't know if it's gonna lift you or drop you. So hard to predict. And and two putts released at just moments apart could do two completely different things mm -hmm. with the same exact release. So it's it's so hard to know. All right, everybody on the board. Except for Calvin. Calv. Ooh, get over that rim, bud. Well, now we'll go into a little tougher of a hole. Yeah. So what do we got coming up? Well, I think it's one of the best par fours in the course. Yeah. So one of my friends gave me this set of DGPT trading cards because they know I'm into disc golf and looking at tiny pictures of my favorite players, I guess. Oh, wow. <laughs> a relic card. It's... <laughs> It's, it's got a piece of disc in it from Paul McBeath. Ha! Huh. So apparently that Paul McBeath relic card was pretty rare and worth a lot of money. So I got three more sets. You know, the more I do this, the more I see why people get so intense about trading cards. I'm still doing this ironically, by the way. Oh my gosh. Six times to 20, on-card auto, case hit, bookend, 
It's got to be at least a nine. Look, look at how perfect that is. Those sharp corners. Three big hits, only two dupes. Oh, this box was a banger. I'm definitely sending this in. I'm buying all the Heimberg I can get my hands on. So if you see something. Did you ever think that you'd see yourself on a trading card when you were growing up? Yeah. Did you? I think when I gave up basketball, I thought the dream was over. <laughs> and then I found disc golf and the dream was still over for a long time. <laughs> Hole four, par four, like we said, and a fantastic par four. Tight gap off the tee. If you're Eagle McMahon, you'll go big hyzer. Most of these guys are probably going to go down the gut. But Anthony Brell, I wonder if he's enticed by that play that Eagle pretty much introduced to the field with the big hyzer play. Looks like he's eyeing the gut. Well, he he kind of goes over it all, oh. as you can see. Oh, that is that is a cheat code. If that tree wasn't there, he might be looking down at the basket. Yeah, I think it put him in a kind of a tough spot because of how yes. tall he is. Yeah, yeah. The, those limbs get pretty close to the ground in front of you, so he's going to have a tricky forehand approach, I'd imagine. Ricky going with the forehand, and, and I, this is working out great. Yeah, really wide right is a great place to be off the tee, especially if you like the forehand approach, and Ricky loves it from that spot. Oh, this is early. He needs air, and air only he doesn't get it. He kicks down to the right, though. I think he's going to be in the fairway. I think he's going to have decent footing. Just a long way to go. Calvin's got this turned over a bit too much, but it fights forward and being on the backside of the tree is just not very good. Probably gonna have to play the wide hyzer luck shot from there. Yeah. And Maddie did get to a decent spot. I like the angle. Yeah, I just don't know if he can get all the way there. Oh no, definitely not all the way there. I think that you've kissed Birdie goodbye if you don't hit this gap cleanly. He called this, going with the sidearm. Looks like a stable putter. We've seen Ricky skip off the cage on his approach on this hole from years back. And look at that. He just dials That's it up. so good. Perfect. And just ride that hillside. And once it's over the hill, right there, he knows, okay, there's nothing this thing can do besides just nestle. Mm. That is gameplay perfection from Ricky Wysocki. So he's going to have to maybe hit that inside oh, gap. Oh, yeah. man. Didn't realize how obstructed it was. But yeah, that from there, you were just kind of rolling the dice. So many low limbs. Seeing AB go down to the knee. Awkward stance. And the stem of the tree is in the way, so he actually has to go Anheuser around. And look at the creativity here, Paul. This is awesome. Just to give himself a look from that spot, that's top notch. Yeah, not a lot of people have the power to be able to do that, what he just did from there. I can't turn his hips into the shot, all arm, executing not only a creative shot, but an athletic move as well. Matty O. That is actually a really tough approach. The headwind coming up the hill. Um, actually, was it a headwind? I think it was a little bit in the face of the players. But that downslope is hard, so hard to get the nose up. Like Calvin has done a great job with that shot, but it wants to run down the hill if you don't get the nose up. He did catch a little roll backwards here. So he's got 40, let's call it 43. And just a bit low there. What an insane start that would have been. Four for four. And Matteo able to save the par. Good putt. Yeah. Didn't good go that putt. far past. And good catch. That was a little left side. All right, Cal, it's time. Got to get some birds. Yeah, and just, I think in this wind, the very most important thing is to stay away from the bogeys, which he's done so far. But there are some birdieable holes on this 
front nine. I, the whole course is a ton. I mean, we saw, like we said, James Conrad find 17 of them last year. Yeah. So this course has plenty of birdie opportunity. But as long as you're not getting bogeys, you're staying in it, I think. I, this course isn't going to score nearly as low as when it will when the, when the winds are down. Yeah, we're getting into a tricky one finally. Par five. <laughs> par five. This, this would be a good get. <laughs> it's a uh, par three, 360 feet. Drift something left to right. Make this fairway as big as possible without hitting that log on the right. Slide it up into the green. You'll see a lot of people end up left by that tree and that grouping if they're throwing backhand. You will see some sidearm flexes from time, but just stay away from the stuff on the right. And there's that just log. Over the log. Over uh, to right of the log. Overturned. Yeah, that's where he, it gets tricky in there. He should be able to come out with a par, but I've seen people kind of mess that up. Anthony going for the turnover just doesn't get the disc to turn. Just goes just straight into the gallery long. And man, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone there before. Brian Earhart says thumbs up. AB says thumbs down. This is what you're... I don't think so, Jeremy. Overturned again. Is, yeah, inside. The, he, you know, you're right, Paul, but he was very oh, close, so close yeah. from getting through that last bit there and having two feet for the birdie. Yeah, you want it to be more straight like this. Yeah, I Calvin's like this. so good to late turn just like that. Just I don't know how he gets that disc to start turning at 300 feet, but he knows that disc so well and he's able to just control it to the very end. Ricky ended up having a little gap, so no problems with the par. I'm concerned with what AB is going to have. I, I really don't know what it looks like back there. Ooh, whoa. whoa. Yeah, th this is dicey. Yeah, well done to get through there. You see the big Anheuser. He wants to land this soft if he does end up missing. Yeah, good effort. Mm-hmm. And Calvin, an opportunity... Get, on get his board. first birdie, yeah. Yeah, good putt. Yeah, the, the hill really helps you. So even if you hit the hill, it will drift you to the right. Yeah, it seems like it's it's a good backstop to kind of force that fairway driver into the hill and let it work yeah. for you. There was an ace on this hole. Got to give a shout out to Zach Nash. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah, this is an all-time ace. I, I can see it, though, and we didn't see anyone go forehand this round on this hole, but forehand is definitely in play, and if you hit that hillside right, just jump up and get yourself a little one-pack. Congratulations to you, Zach Nash. On to hole six. I think this is the easiest hole in the course. It is. And historically, it has been the easiest hole in the course. Just a downhill hyzer to the sweet spot there. And then you have a forehand hyzer into the green or a backhand turnover. The only problem that can really come into play is an early left tee shot that hits the limbs and drops down before the corner. It's also a tricky upshot. You can, I see a lot of people end up short right. Yeah, it, yeah, correct. This is pushing that left side early, but it fights around, and I think he should have a lean out. Well, he doesn't throw the forehands. That's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. The biggest gap is high. Oh, Ricky pulls it right out of the hand, and he's going to find himself in a very tough spot, at least far back. He might have the big forehand flex, but... I don't really see any other way that he can get to the pin from back there. This is what you're looking for. Yeah, this is very, very good. It's just too easy from there. Yeah, it's classic Matty O. Control the nose, put it right down the middle. Great angle for a forehand second. So Ricky, is he? He's got a putter in hand. 
Yeah, he's going to try to just get it on the Anheuser, it looks like. Yeah, not really trying to force the flex play, but just give himself an open look up the hill. I'm surprised to see him not go with a, a fairway driver of some sort. Same. To flex Something back very in there. overstable, yeah. Oh, Calvin, just... That's such a good shot. Wow. Just far enough that he could see the inside corner, has to go low to avoid the limbs, and just throws a butte. That's that inside corner you're talking about, Paul. Yep. Just narrowly avoids it and... Gonna have to earn it. Now he's gonna have to make a putt. Now AB just a little skip around the corner and good. <coughs> Let's see if Ricky's play works out for him. Oh, Paul, how many times have we seen that thing grab? That looked great out of the hand, didn't it? Great uh, height. This plays at about a 28-footer, even though it looks short. And that's... Oh, and the forward roll up the hill. Now he's going to have to earn the par. Well, the good thing is this place is about a 20-footer down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that is a huge putt. You just cannot be dropping two shots to the field on the easiest hole in the course. Matteo saves the par. Calvin, very well executed second shot. Takes the birdie. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's playing tight on purpose as well to get all the way around the corner so Calvin can have a shorter approach in. Because if you're... If you're wide, that turnover is going to be difficult. Yeah, that's not something that we don't really see Calvin go with the high floaty Annie shot. He yep. likes to drive the shot low. Exactly. I think that's his play is to throw the disc into the ground and just let the, the ground slow the disc down. You don't see the, uh, the high turny stuff that we might see from like a James Conrad, for right. instance. Good birdie for AB, getting him back on track. Four under now. Pace being set at four by many players. It's a good start through six holes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a really good start. This one's going to be tough today, Paul. Yeah, you got to cl clear this ditch, which is when it's a headwind, plays like oh. probably four, 60. Yeah, it, yeah, yes. But once you do that, if you can do that, then you got a fairly tricky approach up the hill <laughs> yeah, to go along with it. It doesn't get much yeah. easier. <laughs> and as you can see, it's a mighty big slope there so big turnovers if you get across and then sidearm approaches you just have to get the weight right uh i saw a bunch of people actually laying this up today these guys will not no it for a 655 foot par four where you basically have that tree to worry about and then one other tree to worry about it's probably the trickiest open field 665 you're going to see on tour. Yeah. That's just not that long for these guys. AB, is this going to flip up and turn? It's trying to. It's Look just going to go, go over, over the that. tree, which is just video game. That's just, you cannot do that. That is so high at that distance. Yeah, I saw a lot of people go for it. Not clear. I mean, big throwers too. Mm-hmm. Ricky, he is past the tree and inbounds. Like, look at that's 20 feet past. One little drop, uh -huh. and you're flirting with it. And the thing is, is you don't really want to try to get the maximum distance line where you're turning the disc over because that headwind's going to keep pushing it to the right side, and you're going to be challenging that right side, which is hanging out over the out of bounds line. So, all four players inbounds, but none of those shots look like the traditional tee shot that you see on this hole. No, Amadio just got away with, with it. He went right through that tree. Correct. And this shot's completely blind from the player's perspective. I yeah. like this, though. Aim at that little Christmas tree and then have it filtered Whoa, down. Whoa, Ricky, you are doing some incredible things with that disc right now, man. Incredible touch. Nice little grouping for the rest of the players right here, right in front of each other. Is that his harp or a slam? Is it a slammer that he's throwing there? 
I don't know what he's throwing right there. Those graphics come up after we do commentary, so I'm not quite sure. But either way, he is a putter. That's what we would call he, that. Yeah, he's putter. he's throwing it. Whatever it is, he's throwing it next to the basket most every time he's throwing it. Yeah, they're all going to be throwing putters on this. And that was a great shot that we just saw from Matteo. Ab, this is going to be a little left. Is it? I uh, no, it's a little right. Is what I said. Mm. It's just so hard to know from back there. Yeah. It's, it, as many times, this is our eighth year playing in Jonesboro consecutively, and it's still, you don't quite know where it is. I mean, you have an idea, but that's the best you can do. Now, it's high, but I worry when it's high because then it gets a little roll, but it's far right. Nobody likes that putt. That putt's going to be very fast, 30 feet plus, awkward stance on the hillside, very he's, scary. He's got that little one leg move, though. Shouldn't be a problem. But the lift. So the that's what, one leg move. Well, he does, you know. What do you like, call it? The flamingo stance? Uh, well, if you notice, like with AB, even from there, he's doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. When you're on a slope and you really. You got to find that balance. Well, when you really like uh, you push off that back foot, a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. So when you're on the slope and that's not comfortable, it makes the putt, I feel like, a little more uncomfortable. Sure. So I think he has an advantage by doing that. A little leg twitch. Yeah. Sure. Well, a couple birdies. And a par for Calvin. Watch this starting point from Matteo. Just yeah, directly it, at it. Right <laughs> at the tree. And it didn't really turn over at no. all. Mark is five. Six players with a five under start through seven. Just getting things going. At this the 2024 right Jonesboro. Here. Yes. And it's a good win for it if you're going the right side, trying to throw the hyzer up the hill. The, the issue, though, is once you go up the hill, all things go up, must come down. A lot of times you see them rolling back into the woods. That's why a lot of players have adapted this r left side route where they are going to be going the route that you're going to see AB throwing through. Disc is less likely to roll away if you hit this initial gap, and it looks like he has. It looks like a heavy hyzer, man. I don't like it. Yeah, it's going to be top edge of the circle, just outside putting down. This is a better shape for it. The sidearm. There's just so many sticky things in there that the disc can collide with as it goes through that gap. That's, it's a hard thing to, I don't know. You're just challenging so many little yeah. things. The right side gap is a cleaner gap, but you have a bigger chance of the roll away. And it's easy to, oh uh, yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yes it is. It's also easy to pull it. And once the disc is going, it's not hyzering for a little bit and you really bring that right side into play. Calvin, this I feel like he's never messed this up. I feel like he's the one that really showed the world this shot. This was I mean, like, even with that little twig, this yeah, has got to be all over. Is it parked? It's got to be to me. Yeah. Oh, oh no! No! Well, I was wrong. Get I was wrecked. wrong in the worst way. Oh, absolutely. Just <sighs> demolished. That is brutal, man. And I mean, 150% roll away, too. Like, couldn't have been a worse roll. I've seen people make it from in there. I hope he does. He earned it. That is just brutal. <laughs> I just can't believe how wrecked he just got. That is so We've unfair. Seen it on this course. Remember Macbeth hitting it on on New Eighteen, going out of bounds, hitting on, the base. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was brutal as well. You want to be good, but you don't want to hit the pole ever. No, just lay it up. Unless you're Conrad on hole eighteen. Well, A.B., downhill to get to six under. Like Daft Punk said, human after all. A lot of stuff he's trying to get. Trying to get. 
lot of stuff he's trying to get. What do you mean? What? It'll take me so long to explain my my brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, if he's human after all. Right. All is a ton of stuff. Don't follow. <laughs> Don't do not follow. <laughs> I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. People in the comments might get it. I do. Okay. All right. Right on. Man, that that was tough to watch there from Calvin. Well, Simon and Ben Calloway off to the races at six under through eight. What a good get that one right there. Yeah, it really is. We got a brand new hole here on nine. This is really close to like maybe 50 to 70 feet short of the perfect drive on old 17 is where the new tee pad is here on nine. But it's the same basket placement and the same type of turning down the hill to the right shot. We do, however, have a new hazard area. So if the disc is not moving right, you will find that hazard area. So let's take a look here at Simon Lazat with going for the turnover. Oh. This looks to be way long. And did that find the hazard? No. Okay. So he's safe, but he's way up the hill. We're not checking in on a par, are we? No, I didn't think so. That is such a nasty putt. Simon's seven under now. Wow. Through nine. Or what a front. Well, might as well check on the other guy who's at six. Ben Callaway going with the more common route, the forehand. I like this. Moving right. Underneath the Skipping stuff. Skipping forward. Sit, boo-boo. Curls back to edge of bullseye. Looks like we're going to have a couple players here at seven under. Keep it rolling here with Albert Tom. And that also looks really nice. Yeah, it hits the slope perfectly. If you hit that upslope with Heiser moving with some speed, you're going to get a counter skip to the pin almost every time. Didn't quite require the uh, theatrics or dramatic putt that Simon did, but Ben Calloway also matching Simon's front nine score at seven under. Incredible. Ooh, this is too straight, maybe, Jerm? Or is this perfect? No, I, yeah, it's just... That's great, yeah. Yeah, the higher up the hill you hit, the more likely it is to kind of get that dud skip. You kind of want to just... You want to hyzer a little bit harder, even though your mind thinks that it might hook back to the right. Like I said, when it hits the upslope, it straightens out to the pin. Now, this is... In, perfect. Well, yeah. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. The second skip jumped over the basket. Wow. Wow. How close was this to going in? I like this. He really trying to keep that. Wow. Under his branches and he does a great job. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a double skip ace. Me neither. Oh, well, I've seen those, but I've never seen it on this hole. Oh, this is not it. Inside. Connecting early branches. That will be a scramble situation for Matty O. I, I just cannot recall a single double skip ace. Really? I'm sure I've seen one. I've seen a lot of aces. But I can't off the top of my head think of one. Look at this shot. That is crafty. Oh, dime. What a shape. Gonna have to go with the putt. Oh, no. And, oh my gosh, from Parsylvania to near Birdieville. Great effort. And what's better than giving a hole a good ace run and then making the birdie putt? Not much. Uh, I'd say acing it. That's about <laughs> yeah, it. That's, that's about it. Right. <laughs> 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 nervous laugh a b over the rim and in for six under just missing putts and just six under disc golf is the easiest thing in the world in anthony brella's life right now i don't know what else he's really fighting in his life. I don't know what he's working hard at, but I know disc golf doesn't seem very hard for him right now. It's just doesn't look it. That's it's, for sure. It just looks so it's like as as natural as breathing for him, man. He is just 
throwing the disc and giving himself opportunity after opportunity on every hole. Wow, I, I, I'm actually surprised to see a couple of seven unders and as many six unders as we have in that wind. It was a tough wind. It was it was very gusty. Absolutely, no, you're not lying. It was gusty. It was tough. It was tough scoring out there. It really was. I mean, you had to put yourself really close within 25 feet to really. That's not a guarantee, but for these no. guys, that's pretty much a guarantee. They're making it look that way. Yeah. I mean, tons of scores at four under, and then it's 23 players. I mean, nearly fifth of the field is at four under or better right now. So if you want to be in it, you better bring the noise. Yeah, look at that, though. That PDG number got me above you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is it for the front nine of round one here in Jonesboro, Arkansas for the Played Again Sports Jonesboro Open presented by Westside Discs. Please come back for the conclusion of round one. We'll see you then.